We are moving along in the surgery section for CPT. We are finishing up module three. Um, one of the first things I wanted to look at is exam three. So I'm going to open up the lesson plan. And let's see, exam three won't be too bad. Let me download this file here. Okay, so some of the things you're going to want to know before going into this exam. Anesthesia codes all must have a physical status modifier. And I put some notes there because you're going to see somebody with a history of breast cancer. Well, that's still going to be a P1, a history. It's not there anymore, so it's not an extreme status. Uh, mild systemic disease, P2, severe systemic disease, P3. So I'm just kind of giving you some hints on that one. Uh, anesthesia codes are determined by anatomical site of procedure. It's the smallest, one of the smallest sections at the beginning of our CPT book. Um, and then it is broken down. It starts with the head and goes down to the feet. That's the general layout. Uh, qualifying circumstances, add-on codes, these are in the anesthesia guidelines, the two pages before the anesthesia section. So the ones that you're going to see are 99100. Now keep in mind, if age is mentioned in an anesthesia code, it's not necessary to use that. That's a redundancy. Uh, hypothermia and controlled hypotension or low blood pressure. So these are codes you're going to see. Um, in your exam questions for anesthesia. And then conscious sedation codes. These are actually in the medicine section in the back of the book. Uh, and I think we'll look at some scenarios maybe. We'll see if that comes up. If a modifier is needed, this is how you write it out. You just put a dash. Um, the modifiers, I don't think we're going to have any directional modifiers. I'll probably uh, list uh, which modifiers are in this uh, exam in the PowerPoint. But that's how you write it out. That's the only thing I, we have with that example. That's how you write it when you're doing the exam, um, if you input a code that needs a modifier. Uh, conscious sedation scenario. So again, this is in the back of our book. We have a chart. Um, I'm trying to pull up in my book here to see where it starts. It's a 99 code, which is just confusing since we've just gone over those. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, turn to your mod uh, conscious sedation codes. This is going to be, uh, it starts with code 99151 in the back of the book, the CPT book, which is our focus. So we start on 99151, and you do want to find the table. We looked at this last week, so if you want to review that lecture recording, that probably would be a good idea. These codes are not hard at all. Um, let's turn to that section, 99151. That's where the first code begins. And then turn your back, book page back to where you can see the table of service for moderate sedation. And again, 99151. I might have to do some typing here. All right. So our first scenario, uh, what conscious sedation codes are used if a patient is four years old for a 25-minute procedure? So these codes are broken down by the age of patient. They make it easier. It's uh, under five years or over five years five years or older. So a four-year-old patient uh, for a 25-minute procedure, when we look at our table, and I wish I had a um, copy of this table. Maybe I can pull up my uh, other PowerPoint here. So we looked at this last week. There's my conscious sedation table. Maybe I didn't include it. That could be. I thought I'd had a nice picture of this table. 
Oh, there it is. All right. Okay, so in this table uh, that starts before the conscious sedation codes, we see the time listed there in the far left, the age of the patient, and the codes. Now, there's two columns of codes. So 99151 is when it's done by the treating physician, by the same physician that's doing the procedure. And then the second column that starts with 99155, this is by a separate treating physician. So somebody's performing this procedure, somebody else is doing the conscious sedation. That could be like a nurse practitioner or some other um, qualified person. So we're not fooling with that. We, are, we don't have any information that it's by a different uh, physician. So we're gonna go with the code set of 99151. The patient is four years old and they had 25 minutes of a procedure. So looking at our chart, we go to 23 to 37 minutes, uh, five years or older, and it gives us 99152 and 99153. So that captures this scenario. So we never put the extra time table or anything. No. Time no. Uh, so that's the first scenario. The next one, what conscious sedation codes are used if a patient is 24 years old? Wait a minute. Did I say he was over five years? He's younger than five years. I got myself confused already. Younger than five years, it'd be 99151, then 99153. I get confused with my less than and greater than songs. <laughs> So this is less than five years, and the next one's five years or older. So I was thinking of the uh, second scenario. So my mistake on this one is 99151 and 99153 because he's under four years old, or five years old, he's four years old. So that's the two codes for his situation. The next one, what's the conscious sedation codes if a patient is 24 years old for 25 minutes? Okay, so... We have 23 to 37 minutes, five years or older in our chart. That gives us 99152 and 99153. So these are two codes that captures his conscious sedation. So that's the extent of what you're going to do to find this, if you have this question. Five, three, twice. No, uh, you would actually have a spot. Like if you're inputting it in an EHR, you're going to have a box that asks for how many units of that code. And then you put it in that way. Yes, yes. But yes, yes. So one code, is it's, um, it's placed at a single value, and then you can have as many units of it as needed. So, um, and we're gonna go over claim forms. Um, the paper claim form specifically, even though that's not really used a whole lot, but um, that'll help visualize how that is gonna look. Uh, versed, if you see versed in a question, that's a type of moderate sedation or conscious sedation. So it may not be alluding to you specifically that it says conscious sedation, but I'm giving you a hint. That's what it means when it says verse. That's just a brand name. Uh, the key components of an E&M code. So the three key components are the history exam and medical decision making. All of that's documented in the medical record. So you're going to need to know what those three key units are listed here and the levels of information that they can contain. Uh, easiest, starting with problem focus, going up to comprehensive is the most extensive and probably most expensive reimbursement of office time. But again, you're going to need to know the key components and the different levels. Uh, E&M relationships, the relationship between provider and patient is described as either new, established, or consultation. So you may see some questions saying the patient hasn't been seen in four years at the practice. That indicates that they're new. Uh, the patient returns to their family practice for a visit. And that means they're returning. Uh, consultations, some things to keep in mind with that. A consultation is at the request of a doctor. 
It's not a patient that seeks a second opinion or wants to consult with a doctor on something. A consultation specifically comes from another doctor. Uh, E&M highlights, so some of the codes here for preventive medicine, 99401 to 99404. Uh, the factor is time. Uh, and I have some notes here. If 38 minutes is documented, use the code that captures up to 45 minutes. If 55 minutes is documented, use a code for 60 minutes. So you're going to see these weird time frames, one or the other, and I'm telling you what it's going to be coded as. So maybe keep this PowerPoint handy when you do the exam. Another code that comes from the medicine section, 99024, that's a post-op follow-up visit. That code doesn't have a monetary value attached to it. It's for tracking purposes. But I know, for instance, Medicare, they mandate that this is tracked and reported because they're paying for this follow-up visit. They've already paid for it. So they want to know how their money is doing on the procedure they just paid for on the patient. So when you see something that says follow-up, that's what that means. And then you may see a code from the emergency department section, which is rather small, 99281 to 99285. Um, you're not going to be figuring out what a level is of an e &M code. It's going to tell you what type of history exam and medical decision making so you can find the correct code range. The different modifiers you will specifically see include 26, um, interpreting and evaluating results. When we talk about radiology and pathology next week, that modifier is used a lot for that because a physician may not have collected the specimen from the lab test, but they're interpreting it and they're giving their report and their um, actual opinion. Uh, bilateral 50, that's very common. Uh, 73, discontinued procedure before anesthesia. And then modifier 32 for mandated services. Uh, HICPICS level two modifiers that you're gonna see, these are on the very back of the front cover of your CPT book. Um, these are on the internet as well, but the specific ones you're gonna see, E1, that's a upper eyelid, left eyelid. RC, T4, T5, these are the toes, right and left modifiers. If a body direction or side is not provided, don't use a directional modifier. And exam three will not require you to actually type out a modifier to a CPT code. So that's gonna be easy enough. Um, so you're gonna have multiple choice questions on these. All right, for procedures, we're going to talk about surgery today. Uh, you're going to see a procedure asking for a code for a radical resection of a tumor. And keep in mind that codes are based in this section on size, less than or greater than two centimeters. Um, excision of bones, benign tumors, uh, areas of the head. Do not use left or right modifiers. So if somebody has something on their left cheek or, or whatever, you don't use a modifier for that. You're gonna see some procedure codes on arthroscopy. That's a visual exam of a joint. And that can be either diagnostic or surgical. And you'll see it for the anatomy of the knees, wrists, and shoulders. So this exam shouldn't be too bad. Most of it, it is multiple choice. So uh, that's gonna be due next week. When there is a bonus point opportunity as well. So I'm going to stop my recording here to um, summarize the um, 